Hi, I'm Chris Rakakis, Applied Math Instructor at MIT. Today what we're going to be talking about is how differentiable programming can give you fundamentally better algorithms than algorithms which require keeping an equation solver as a black box. You may have heard of techniques like adjoints of neural ODEs. What we're going to show is that actually using the information from within the equation solver can greatly improve the training process that it allows. So what is the actual underlying problem that we're going to talk about here today? Well, it's going to be neural ODEs as adaptive layer methods. You may have heard of them as implicit layers. The idea behind this is that while a recurrent neural network requires that you specify a fixed number of layers, essentially a neural ODE can allow you to do machine learning in a way that is automatically uh, optimizing hyperparameters because the adaptive ODE solver is choosing the number of layers for you. So while this is a nice property, right, what you, what you really want in machine learning is the ability for the neural ODE to be able to choose the architecture which has the least number of layers for a given problem, right? That would be essentially optimizing the, the number of layers to be as small as possible and getting as fast of an architecture um, automatically. Now, one group before us had shown that, you know, in some sense, this is possible by using higher order automatic differentiation, right? You, you, you can say that, you know, if a dynamical system has very high extra derivatives, those, those values, you know, are, are representing some higher order properties that we might want to mitigate. And if we want to find the simplest dynamical system that can act as, you know, the recurrent neural network for image processing. Um, and, and so what they do is they show that you can regularize out this higher order behavior by using uh, Taylor mode automatic differentiation, but that ends up being about 10 times slower to train than the original neural ODE form. So can you get around this issue? It turns out you can. And the reason is because solvers know a lot about the equation that they're actually solving, right? If you look at the process of an adaptive ODE solver, it chooses a time step and then it pr proposes two solutions in the future. And the difference between those solutions is then used to approximate the error before it figures out whether the error is too high and then changing the time step to step. But if the adaptive ODE solver already knows how to compute errors within the ODEs, then already has a measure for how, you know, how hard the, the differential equation is. So what we can do then is we can use that internal error estimate as our regularization for the neural ODE to be able to say, find us the, the easiest ODE to solve. And, and so what we show then is that we're able to get about you know, 10 times faster than, or than, the, or than, that other, than that other group, but while still being able to get very low prediction times and be able to get something that is almost as uh, having the same loss as the unregularized form. And what this means then is that using this, this regularization, regularizing out things like stiffness and error estimates that automatically exist within adaptive ODE solvers, um, you're able to get faster neural ODE training and faster neural ODE prediction. And, and this just requires that you take into account the properties of the algorithm itself instead of using an adjoint approach, which keeps you know, the ODE solver as a black box. Now, does this generalize? We, we also show then, you know, you can take the same idea to neural SDEs. So, you know, neur neural SDEs have been shown to be able to be a nice way to incorporate some randomness into the, the distributions when you're generating images. Well, we recently showed in, in, uh, in a 2020 paper that you can get, uh, make new SDE solvers that have very high stability regions, error estimates and uh, estimates for stiffness. And so what happens if you take these new SDE solvers and use these error estimates as your regularization in a neural SDE training process? Well, you get this same property where you get a neural SDE which predicts and, and trains almost as well as your original vanilla version, but it is able to train a lot faster and it is able to predict twice as fast than your original neural SDE. Right, so what this is really showing then is that this, this general idea of using internal algorithmic information you know, for you know, SDE solvers, ODE solvers, and, and probably also you know, nonlinear solvers like in deep equilibrium models, using that internal information for error estimators can improve the training process for machine learning applications. Um, and so we probably do not want to be keeping these algorithms as a black box in the future, but instead open up that black box and use all of the information that's given to us. So in conclusion, what this is showing is that, you know, you, you really want differentiable programming. You want to differentiate algorithms because they have this knowledge and heuristics inside of there. And those heuristics are useful for what we're trying to do. So thank you very much.